Hello and welcome to our ongoing series of conversations with people who are making a difference with how it is that we live our business and personal lives. Joining us today is Andrew Heath. He's the Senior Director for the Utility Practice at J.D. Power. Andrew, thank you so much for taking the time to chat today. Great to be with you. Uh, thanks so much for inviting me to join you. So I wanted to uh, to pick up on a water utility study that you've just wrapped up. Uh, I know that this is something that has been uh, growing in importance. It's an important, er- important area of coverage for J.D. Power. Tell me a little bit about the mission of the study and what J.D. Power set out to do with this research initiative. Sure thing. Yeah, the, the focus of this study was asking everyone who's a residential water uh, customer to give us their impressions of the quality of service and how satisfied they are with the support they get from the water utility. So we were asking a whole range of questions, um, looking at not just their quality of water views, but also things like how well their local water utility supports them when they have a problem, you know, what the billing and payment process looks like, things like that, how well engaged that utility is within their local community. Um, and all of that really is critical from the point of view of the utilities needing to get support of customers so that when the utility needs to make investments, and nearly all utilities across the whole nation right now do need to make investments, so when that happens, they actually have the backing of customers to make those changes happen. Very interesting. So as you uh, ask these questions, what were some of the key findings that came out in the survey process? There's there's actually a mix. There's some good and bad news in here. Um, We've got some of the things that, in general, most water utilities do particularly well. Um, They're doing things well in terms of um, providing good support when there's bills sent out and payments processed, the basics. Um, They also do, on average, pretty good work regarding the quality of the product they deliver, essentially the, the water coming out of the faucet, as well as providing um, support that is then reliable. So, you know, people get water, it's available to them. Things tend to go less well um, in terms of areas such as how well a water utility communicates with customers. Customers, for some utilities, they're doing a good job on conservation work. On others, maybe less so. And yet, nationwide, things like conservation really matters to all customers. And it's interesting because that isn't even dependent on whether or not there's a shortage of water. Everyone across the whole nation is interested in conservation and you know, rewards the water utility when they do, provide support and do it well. Very interesting. As you looked at things year over year, did you see some areas where, uh, where, where those, uh, those points of differentiation uh, manifested themselves particularly clearly? Um, yeah. We've actually, this is our third year of conducting the research, so customers have shared views now um, for you know, three years. and. We've seen, in general, um, significant improvements across a range of areas, things like the product itself, um, the billing and payment process is one area that really improved in the last 12 months. Um, The only area where water utilities are really not keeping up with customer expectations is the category we call customer service, and that's, that's the category where customers reach out either on the phone or maybe use the website to ask a question or get information from the water utility. That's one of the areas where, unfortunately, there has been a decline over the last 12 months. And to what do you attribute to that? Is this a lack of investment in digital tools and, and, uh, and, and putting the right people in place to, uh, to be more customer-centric in their approach to serving their customers? I, you know, I think that's a huge part of it. Um, if you actually look at what your water utilities are doing, it's not as though they're actually providing fewer services or not providing the same service. I think the key thing here is that all of us as customers have got higher expectations of what customer service looks like. So across JD Power, not just in this study, but my colleagues who will look at other industries are constantly observing how customers' expectations keep rising based on the interactions they have with other retailers, other service industries. Um, other product providers, as they all provide better services, guess what? Customers now think the water utility should should do the same thing. And traditionally, the water utilities are not investing to the same degree as many of those other industries I I was just mentioning. Well, it's one thing to try to compare yourself to a Facebook or or an Amazon that's getting so many headlines. Uh, How is the water utility industry comparing? How is it performing when you compare it to other utilities, gas, electric, for instance? 
we actually cover all three of those utilities and a whole range of other service industries. Unfortunately, um, on average, uh, the water utility is the lowest performer across all of those industries. Now, there are some brands who are performing much better than average, and that there's a few that are performing much lower. But if I just look at the average score for the feedback from water customers across the whole of the U.S., then unfortunately the feedback is there's a lot of room for improvement, and the industry simply isn't keeping up with what everyone else is doing in other in other industries. So, Andrew, what is it that the other utilities, say gas and electric, are doing that is better in engaging with customers than what the water utility industry appears to be doing? One of the challenges we see, and it does stand out, is the difference in how well the utilities communicate. Utilities, and I'm thinking more so electric and natural gas utilities, will do a better job communicating with their customers than the water utilities. Uh, The water utilities tend to be quiet. Now, all three of those areas, electric, gas, and water, relative to everybody else that we as consumers deal with, they are much quieter than most. Um, However, it's certainly one of those areas where the industry in general and water utilities specifically have an opportunity to just get get better at communicating, letting customers know what's going on, letting, letting customers know what is being done to improve the service, and just being there and thinking through the problems from a customer's point of view, not just in terms of how you manage the system properly, but also how you help the customers use their water effectively, how you let them know how changes that are being made will help improve the quality of the service they get. Well, you mentioned the passionate uh, relationship that that, uh, that that citizens and consumers tend to have with their, their source of water. Uh, I suppose uh, that they're looking for some thought leadership from the water utility on what they can do to better conserve or better utilize this resource. Is this the sort of communication that you think the water utility industry could uh, engage in to, uh, to better resonate with their consumers? Yeah, that's a great example. Um, it's, it's interesting as you look at feedback that customers provide us, how important they consider conservation as part of the overall things that their local water utility should do. And that, it's always fascinating uh, just to see whether that somewhere down in, say, the southwest where there truly is a shortage of water and everything is being done to conserve water. Um, customers value their water utility looking at and communicating how to help customers save water. Um, but it also applies elsewhere in the nation, even, though, even in areas where, you know, strictly speaking, there isn't a formal water shortage. Uh, people still think they should be good at using the water in a way that respects and maintains the sources for everybody else. You know, the other category of communication that I imagine is important, and, and I think I tend to see this more from my own personal experience with the gas and, 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 and electric utilities, is during times of crisis, whether it's a man-made dis, uh, disaster or a natural disaster, when there's an interruption of service. Uh, how well does the water utility perform in, under those circumstances uh, in times of stress in terms of dealing with their consumers, and does that have an impact on customer satisfaction levels? It definitely does, yeah. So, I mean, we, if you were to think through, for example, some of the natural disasters we had at the end of 2017, which was during the period we were completing the surveys, um, you can see how the responses for different industries during the hurricanes down in the southeast varied. There were some industries, and electric was a good example, where they were ahead of and had learned lessons from previous storms, and they focused a lot of time and effort to tell people as much as they knew about when the power was going to be restored and what was happening to restore power. You can never make it perfect, but as much information as you've got, customers will value every piece of information they can get. Definitely an area where there was room for improvement across the water industry. There are some utilities that are doing a good job reaching out to customers and being proactive, but in general, the average utility is is not doing so well. Some of the best performers actually out on the West Coast, uh, away from some of the natural disasters, one of our top-ranked brands this year, uh, Eastern Municipal Water in Southern California, one of the reasons they've done so well is they've done a lot of proactive interactions where they will provide customers who want them text or email or additional information 
based on things that are relevant to the customer so they know what's happening. They, and they're doing that more so than most of the other water utilities that we surveyed this year. Very interesting. You know, and when I think of a water utility, I typically think, okay, well, there's some kind of a monopoly, whether they're a municipally run organization or a private sector monopoly. And it makes you wonder, does, you know, when you have a lock on the market, does customer satisfaction actually matter? And what was your sort of conclusions, uh, given that, you know, you sort of have a captive audience, so to speak? Um, I, I think it does matter. Based on what we hear back, you mentioned that word passion, um, which I think is a critical thing that customers have. They, 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 they do get passionate about their water supply. Um, and whether it's a privately owned business, and there's a number of large water utilities that are privately owned, but, or a publicly owned um, water utility, for example, the city that's providing service, um, the citizens or customers in that city, they're passionate about that service. And they then have expectations about what they want to have delivered in terms of the water they get from the city, but they also have expectations about the service levels the city should be honoring. Failing to meet those expectations is a problem. You know, citizens make their voice heard, um, customers, uh, make their voice heard if there's a regulator out there that will then have an impact on maybe even the financial success of a privately owned water utility. We've seen in other industries, especially regulated utilities, where if you look how well a business is rewarded for performance, you can see that businesses with higher levels of customer satisfaction are businesses that are typically getting better returns on the money they invest looking after their customers. Very interesting. Now, um, did you come away with some key action items or some uh, steps, or uh, did you have some insight into what water utilities can actually do to uh, to improve the customer satisfaction performance? I think some of it is give thought to areas where typically most water utilities have not been very strong. Communications will be one of those areas. Think about what can be done to encourage customers to be aware of conservation uh, even if you're not, strictly speaking, in an area where there is a shortage of water, customers still respond well to those actions. Look at and understand some of the changes taking place in other industries. So as other industries start providing more solutions to help customers use self-service options to interact, how can a water utility do something similar and make those services readily available? And then finally, um, give some serious thought to what customers think about the quality of the product. I said up front that, in general, this is a strength, but we still find, it, and it's a surprising number as you look back at the survey data, we had 30% of people tell us that they had some sort of water quality issue. Now, that 30% is nothing like the sort of number that will be reported by the consumer confidence reports every water utility has to publish. Those numbers are a lot less. So the water provided from a strict operational sense is, is high quality, and yet customers are not perceiving that. Where are the gaps? What can water utilities do to help customers and make sure they address those particular gaps? From a more specific point of view, anyone interested in getting more information, um, we are available. We support a lot of the businesses that uh, customers have given us information about. Uh, so our team at JD Power would, would love to be interacting with you. Uh, you can get further information actually at jdpower.com slash water. Very interesting. We'll come back to I'll make sure that we repeat that again. I wanted to get uh, uh, your take on, on this question, however. The utility industry has uh, is a very mature industry. It's, uh, it's, a, it's, it's an industry, uh, a set of industries that, that prizes maturity and processes. And I wonder whether that sometimes comes at the cost of customer centricity, especially given that often they, they do have a, a, a lock on their market, as we discussed previously. Is it important for the water utility to consider making adjustments to their culture to elevate the uh, priority of, of those customers' interactions? Yeah, definitely. Um, I think one of the key things you, you get from any research like this where you start listening to customers is how knowledgeable they are, the insights they can have, and, and just a different perspective they have about what your business is about. Um, as you start listening to customers and hear their voices, that really has a major impact in terms of the way individuals in the business and the business overall in terms of its culture just changes the way it behaves and starts to think more about 
what am I doing that has an impact on the customers in a good way? Are we doing the right things? Uh, the things we're focused on, the things that matter to our customers. Once those cultural changes start taking place, then you truly start to see a shift in performance and customers respond to businesses that have made that change. In that same vein, uh, a lot of, uh, of the industries, in fact, a lot of the industries that J.D. Power covers are going through some kind of a digital transformation. And you earlier talked about texting and, and the self-service applications, which presumably would occur in a digital environment, uh, some sort of a, a next generation web uh, strategy. Uh, what role should a customer experience focus play in? Uh, in the digital transformation journeys that the water industry is undertaking, if they're undertaking them at all? You know, there's a couple of things. I think from a customer's point of view, um, there's some real benefits. If it's, it's, I always find it fascinating when you look at the feedback from customers. They would actually much rather use self-service or digital channels than talk directly to a person. And, he's, and as you start thinking about it, it makes sense. I mean, their goal is not to have a friendly chat with someone and solve a problem. They're you know, their, their challenge is solving the problem. And if the Internet and the website or uh, some other online channel, maybe a, an app, might be the best way of doing it, that's the way customers will prefer to get the response. As you start thinking about it more specifically for, say, the water industry, you can see things such as water utilities that have got meters that capture how much water is being used on a regular basis. We can see uplift in satisfaction when those utilities choose to use that information to then give people warnings that they are using more water than usual. So potentially there is, maybe there's a leak on the system on the customer's side um, and the customer needs to investigate it. A water utility that then uses that information is able to then send a digital alert, let a customer know, that could be text, it could be email, uh, just triggers the action and it helps the customer realize that the utility is there to help them. Uh, it's not just someone who's looking to get their bill paid every month. It's actually they're thinking about issues that a customer's facing. And in that instance, where there might be a potential water leak, is actually looking out for and getting ahead of problems before the customer realizes it. You know, it, it, it almost sounds like you're talking about a water version of Internet of Things, uh, applying sensors and leveraging that intelligence. Am, am I on the right track? Are those kinds of uh, the integration of operational technologies with information technology, is that something that the water utility is looking at as a way to harness and better tailor their service to consumers? It's certainly something they can do, yeah. I mean, not every customer or not every water utility has access to all of that technology in terms of the infrastructure that is available. But for those who do have, then there's definitely an opportunity for more effectively leveraging that technology and you know, providing solutions to customers that make sense, that are relevant, that impact how the customer at home is getting service from their water utility or maybe some of their other utility providers if it's for some of the other metering services they get. Very interesting. Well, it sounds like a fascinating study. It sounds like you've got a tremendous amount of insight. How can uh, the members of the water utility community engage with J.D. Power to access these data and, 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 and take advantage of the insights that you are bringing to market, especially as it relates to improving the customer experience? So we work already with uh, many of the water utilities that are included in the survey that we uh, published in 2018. And should anyone who's listening choose to or wants to find out more information, uh, definitely encourage everyone to uh, go to jdpower.com slash water. Um, you'll be able to provide out further information there about the research that we've done and also how to make contact with us uh, to ask us further questions and obviously our team would love to hear from you. Outstanding, Andrew. Thank you so much for taking the time to share your insights and your perspectives on how the water utility can leverage voice of the customer data to improve the way they interact with their consumers. My pleasure. Great to be able to join you today.